Thank you for coming to the webinar on programs, pathways, and partnerships. Um, I'm Maria Marshall. I'm the director of the North Central Regional Center for Rural Development, NCRCRD. Although I see that now it's slipping from my tongue a lot easier than it did in September when we first, uh, when the, uh, the center first transitioned to Purdue. So um, I'm not hesitating on the words any longer with that. That means that progress has been made already. So um, just to give you a little bit of motiv uh, motivation why we decided to do this particular webinar to kind of introduce and reintroduce the center to you um, and in the North Central region is on our last webinar, we did get uh, some feedback on like, what's the NCRCRD? What do they do? What can it do for us? And so we thought it would be a great way to introduce the center or reintroduce the center to the North Central region. Talk about the things that the center has done well and will continue to be doing and some new activities and new opportunities for us all to collaborate across the region and, and let you know what those, what those opportunities are and what we hope to accomplish with, with some of those. And with that, I will go ahead and get started. And Michael, if I forget anything, feel free to just chip in. Okay, so for those of you that are not familiar uh, with the rural, uh, regional rural development centers, there's actually four centers across the country, all funded by the National Institute of Food and Health, uh, sorry, Food and Agriculture, NIFA, making a new agency here, um, US, from USDA. So we are funded by USDA, and then of course we go out for other funds and, and things like that. Um, but there are four regional centers and they're each highlighted. So the North Central region is the lightest green, um, which is 12 states. Um, and obviously this is now hosted at Purdue University. There's the Western Center, which is hosted by Utah State University, the Southern Center hosted at Mississippi State, and the Northeast Center hosted at, hosted at Penn State. And really the mission of the Regional Rural, rural Development Centers is for regional rural development. And we work together um, on a national level and a lot in a national scope when that's appropriate, um, or we try to do things at a regional level and then expand it on a national level. So there's a lot of collaboration that happens um, across the regional centers. Just for the fact, we meet actually once a month to talk about things that we could be doing together or that we can enhance in a national way. So the sister centers work really, um, really well together. But I thought I'd give you a sense of like, okay, where the NCRDRC falls within four centers in the North Central region. And these, this is uh, the North Central region, which is in, in green. So the staff of the NCRCRD, uh, it's myself as the director and then uh, Dr. Michael Wilcox, the associate director. Michael, you wanna say hi? <laughs> He's waving hello. Um, we have Dr. Susana Betnarikova, which is a, who's, who is a research and extension specialist. Uh, Renee Wyatt, also a research and extension specialist, also works with the Purdue Institute for Family Business. Saad Mukhtar, our communication specialist and Shelly Serber, and he waved as well, and Shelly Serber, who is an account, our account manager and senior administrative assistant. And basically the one person who really runs the center because she keeps us all in line and, and knows what's going on. So and then it, everyone's really indispensable. But the, just to give you a sense of who the staff are at, at the center, and um, probably as you see with our research and extension specialist, kind of how we see the center. We see a center that wants to do research, but collaborate and facilitate it across the region, but also have extension and outreach as a core component of what we do. And the integration of those two is super important to us. And we wanna make sure that everything we do, we can, we can make sure that we've got boots on the ground and that we're doing um, outreach with it. Our board of directors, our chair of our board is Joe Parcell, Dr. Joe Parcell at University of Missouri. We have Elizabeth Dovis, who is at USDA Economic Research Service. Uh, Brent Elrod, who's also at NIFA. And then uh, Bernie Engel and Jason Henderson, both Purdue, that's part of the bylaws of our of the center. So in case you think it's too Purdue heavy, this is actually part of the bylaws. One is the research uh, extent, uh, experiment station director and the other is the extension director. So that's where that combination goes. Um, Amber Marlowe, who's at uh, La Porte Aurelis Obidua of College. 
our tribe, or one of our 1994s in Carl Martin, who's at University of Wisconsin. So that is our board of directors um, trying to, as you can see, again, research and extension well represented. So the mission of our center is really, we want to build rural communities through cutting edge research ex and extension programs through innovative partnerships. So we consider the center as a collaborator and facilitator of research and extension across the region, whether it's by providing funds to enhance those collaborations, uh, doing some other activities that we'll talk about later to enhance those collaborations. And uh, that's really the core. Uh, obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious, I should keep saying obviously, but um, a core part of that is making sure that we're really having impact on rural communities across the, the North Central region and uh, lifting up programs that are happening at land grant universities across the region where we're saying, hey, this is really good work here. Why don't we try replicating it elsewhere? How can we help you have an, a wider impact? Um, so that we really see ourselves and the center as, as really a core in trying to do that and, and, and widening it across the region and, and having a regional impact. So when we uh, put forth our proposal for the uh, NCRCRD to be able to host it at Purdue, this is our very Purdue-centric <laughs> graphic that we came up with, but it really represents how we were thinking of, uh, of how we wanted the center to work in a systems way, right? So like in a systems perspective. So creating resilient in commun communities and economies, developing leadership and civic engagement, promoting community health and wellness, those are all really interrelated themes and subjects and focused on communities, businesses, and households, also very interconnected systems. So we really think that the systems thinking can build regional collaboration, that if we wanna solve big problems, we're really looking at not just I'm doing economic development, but how does that interplay with health and with civic engagement, right? They're all interconnected. So thinking of things in a systems perspective, widening, widening our thought process to, yes, we do community development, but we also need to be integrating 4-H, um, HHS or consumer family sciences, depending on what land grant you're at, or human ecology, and ANR, right, agriculture and natural resources, and how are, these are all interlinked in rural areas and rural regions. And so how are we building interdisciplinary teams that are looking through, that are really, um, that can really help us enhance what we do and the impact we have in the region. And so those are our three themes and the three kind of uh, target audiences that we, are, we want to target and we want to work with um, and focus on. And I'll, uh, I'm just gonna give a brief, description of what we what we're when we talk about creating resilient communities and economies what are we talking about or what are we thinking about at least in our minds and uh i'm sure that these things are going to evolve as the center gets older at purdue how they say and as we get more feedback from you all and more perspectives that um, help us enhance these these themes and these target audiences so uh, when we're talking about creating resilient communities and economies, um, you know, I, mean, I know that resilient is, is almost supplement to sustainability in a way, in the way we're talking about it, but uh, we're really thinking that this requires a lot of these complex interconnecting decisions that individuals, households, businesses, and communities make. Again, these interlocking systems, this systems thinking that we can't have resilient communities or economies if we only concentrate on individuals or just on communities or businesses, that we have to have this perspective and, and people working in all areas, but then also talking to each other when it comes to focusing on these different target audience and groups. Um, and so we know that it's kind of this ability to bounce back better, which some of my colleagues will know that, yeah, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about when we're talking about disaster resilience, about bouncing back better. So it's not just about how do our how are communities and economies surviving, right? So they're still there, but it's worse off than before, but, and, or recovering, they're just the same, but how are they really 
being better, bouncing back better, being resilient, adapting to new things and things that are happening, whether it's on the economic front, or whether it's uh, talking about even civic engagement, how are we doing better? And how are we moving the needle for um, rural communities? And then developing civic uh, leadership and civic engagement. Well, we know how important that is. We've seen that this summer and we see it today. Uh, we uh, see it in uh, even thinking about vaccinations or health and uh, pu public health and how do we put out messages to the community and who's involved in providing those messages and who are trusted uh, uh, members of the community that can bring about messages and get and be inclusive. Of course, it, for us, it's fundamental that we think about diversity, equity, and inclusion when we think about leadership and civic engagement and how, how are we enhancing that across the region? What's the research and outreach that we can do and play a part in making this a better place and an inclusive place for all of us? So, uh, so that's what we mean and, and what we're thinking about when we're thinking about leadership and, and civic engagement. And then promoting community health and wellness. Um, we know that if you don't have healthy communities, whether it be, uh, it, it's hard to provide education, have, have a lot of different, you know, our whole lifestyles depend on us being healthy, uh, whether it's health behavior, whether it's our physical environment, which it, whether it's the community or economic, condi uh, so our economic conditions. And so again, I think this, brings about why we're thinking so much in a systems perspective, because uh, if we don't have, you know, if we're not promoting health and wellness, it's hard to have resilient communities. And it's hard to have uh, members of our community be civically engaged when they're just surviving and trying to do things. So how are these things interplaying and, and how are we making things better? Oh, Michael, I thought you were gonna say something. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to learn your face, I think. <laughs> Um, Michael, you want to go ahead since I called your name and talk about some of our enhanced activities? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Maria. So with, with the three themes in mind, we wanted to talk about some of the activities that we're doing. And many of these uh, will look like what NCRCRD has been doing for quite a while now and, and doing it quite well. So I'll just walk through these very quickly, and then we'll move to some of the other activities that we are uh, doing, some new activities, uh, but coordinate collaborative grant opportunities. That's something that the NCRCRD has been doing since its founding. Uh, we have different grants that, that come up, and we seek out folks from throughout the region and beyond the region, depending on the grant, uh, to see if people are uh, willing and able to collaborate. So we are doing that right now with a grant that we have with APLU. APLU received a grant from Ascendium and we're working on developing rural uh, pathways to work. So uh, rural workforce development. And we have about eight universities, eight or nine universities from across the United States that are working with us uh, on that project. That's just one uh, example. So coordinating uh, collaborative grant opportunities is, is a key piece. Uh, we are uh, working on expanding the community development impact reporting. Uh, it's the time of year right now where the NCRCRD collects all the uh, impact indicator data uh, from the 12 states and um, we produce a report that we then uh, send out that examines the, um, the impact that community development uh, extension has had uh, throughout the region. So we're working on that right now. And uh, the indicators, that we led the way, um, the North Central did back in, oh boy, it was 2007 or eight, uh, when we agreed upon uh, 15 different metrics that we were going to measure every year um, to look at our, our impact. And uh, the South is doing that as well. And um, we haven't changed our impact indicators in, in that time frame. And so we're looking at how do we enhance those? How do we do a better job from a diversity, equity, and inclusion standpoint as far as our impact reporting is concerned? Uh, cultivating and marketing high impact webinars. So uh, some of you attended our first webinar where we highlighted uh, the opportunities and challenges that exist um, working with the uh, the 1994s and we're excited to, that we'll be hosting a, uh, a round table around the data that was collected, uh, affording everyone an opportunity to come to the table and, uh, and uh, discuss ways forward uh, there. 
we have a webinar coming up next month that uh, Maria will talk about from uh, Iowa State and another one coming in in June talking about the community uh, development uh, extension library, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit here in a moment. Uh, provide logistical support for program leaders. So the, we assemble the community development program leaders uh, every month for a monthly call. And Maria has been reaching out to the three other program areas, 4-H Youth Development, Family Consumer Science, and Ag and Natural Resources uh, as well to share um, uh, information between the center and uh, the program leaders. Uh, promote North Central research and extension activities. Uh, so we try through our social media when we see something great going on at one of the 34 universities and colleges that are part of the NCRCRD, uh, we want to make sure that we celebrate their um, their successes and get to know what's going on at each of the uh, universities and colleges so we can help do the first one, <laughs> coordinate and uh, collaborative grant opportunities. And if we don't know uh, what's going on, then it's hard to uh, uh, bring people together. Uh, collaborate with extension uh, experiment station directors. Uh, we meet with um, the association heads, uh, keep them abreast of, of what the center is doing, and they uh, discuss with us uh, the, the concerns and opportunities of the uh, experiment station directors and the extension directors as well. Uh, we also uh, received some funding from those associations as well, which is much appreciated. And we'll talk a little bit on, on how we're using that funds, uh, those funds to help uh, out in the North Central region. And then lastly, uh, connect local st and state efforts to uh, regional initiatives. And we, we achieved this in, a, in, in several different ways. Um, but if there's something good coming out of a local a locality or uh, a state, we try to um, regionalize that or um, facilitate the regionalization of those um, best practices and programs, if you will. Um, and that's an exciting part of the job is to make sure that if there's something going on that's a really cool in Ohio, you know, how do we connect South Dakota to that or, or Nebraska or, or other states? And so uh, that's a key piece of, of what we do as we try to uh, network and build that, uh, that bridging social capital uh, across all of the uh, 34 universities and colleges that are part of the North Central region. Marie, it's all you. Thanks, Michael. And so on to new activities. You're all like, okay, that's great, but tell us what you go, what, what's the new stuff that we, that we can be part of. And so uh, one of the new activities that we're going to start is an advisory committee. Um, and this is a modeled after what the Southern Re uh, Regional Rural Development, uh, Rural, Rural Development Center does, which is have a, an advisory committee that can help us think about what are priorities for the North Central region. That's a mixture of research and extension professionals. And they can say, you know, this is what's happening in the region. So we can have a kind of a, a grassroots way of understanding what's happening in the center. We're here at Purdue, we might know a lot about Indiana, maybe Illinois, or maybe our very, very close neighbor states, but we might not know what are some issues that are happening in Nebraska or Kansas or Minnesota. And so we want to have a, an advisory committee that really thinks about, well, what's happening in the region? What are some things that we can do? Um, and so we are seeking um, a representation from the North Central region. We want representation from the 1862s, 1890s, and 1994s. Faculty or staff with a research and extension, with research and extension experience, we again want to have a interdisciplinary advisory committee. And there'll also be representation of the four program, uh, the four uh, extension programs, as well as part of this committee. So something that the committee would do would attend some biannual meetings uh, to provide advice and expertise on enhancing our panel data set, which I'll talk about um, afterward. Um, think about potential for focus areas around our, our working groups that we want to stand up and reviewing our multi-state working group proposals and making re those recommendations to the board and reviewing the small grants and then re making recommendations to the board. The board makes the final decisions, but we wanna make sure that we have a broad set of uh, representation looking at some of these activities and guiding some of the things that we're doing. So uh, basically Michael and I are trying to think of everything, right? So um, we wanna make sure even though we have connections with all the different states, we wanna make sure that we have a really great committee. So if you're interested in being on the advisory committee, please let myself or Michael know because we are about to stand up this committee pretty soon. 
So our panel data set, this is very exciting. So one of the things that we proposed is to have a panel data set for the North Central region. So we know that there is fantastic work going on across the states on whether it's health and well-being, community resilience indicators. Uh, for example, Missouri has a great hunger atlas that they're doing. And so thinking about what are some indicators that are happening in, in different states that are have already been vetted, they've been done for years, and can we use those across the region and have a regional data set that researchers or extension professionals could be using to either do primary data collection, not primary data collection, but either use as a data set, uh, use to get other funding. Um, and so this is what we're proposing is to have a panel data set for the North Central region that would help this incentivize collaboration across states and disciplines. Um, and we would, the center would maintain the data collected across time. The advisory committee would help design the policies for use and distribution. And uh, we would connect data across our three systems and our three themes. And so we're really, we're right now, and uh, Dr. Bednatikova is our, is the lead for our panel data set. So <laughs> we put a lot in her hands um, to take us forward, but we are very excited about this opportunity because I think as a faculty member, an extension specialist, I know that you know we can provide money, but if we can provide data um, and if we can understand how we're really moving the needle across, across the North Central region, that's that's golden, right? Because um, money you know can come and disappear, but if we have data that we can maintain and and we make uh, make that use available to to researchers and extension professionals, that that's something that we can really just really can enhance the collaborations across the region. So we're really excited about um, our, our process of starting that. So um, our next act, new activity is a starting working groups and we're calling working groups. Uh, they're modeled after the multi states. Um, and they're a lot modeled after by the multi-state that I'm a part of, which is, I think, very successful and very collaborative. And but these working groups would get funding, um, $50,000 for three years. And it would, the working group could focus on centers through themes, either interconnected themes, or it could work on one theme and one system. But it would be a mixture of uh, research and extension of uh, faculty or staff and would think about uh, any of these three themes on a regional level, would want to do work, um, whether it's research. And this, fund, this funding could be used for workshops to get together, to collect data, to go after different proposals. But it would be, we know that it's hard to do a project in one year. And so providing funding for one year seems like, well, we want to provide funding, but we want to provide funding that enhances collaborations and facilitates collaborations and incentivizes collaborations. And so we are excited to provide funding for these working groups. And again, here's to like the minimum that we were looking for, which is um, that it's represented of the six of six states in the North Central region uh, that include faculty and or staff of Langrand colleges and universities, so it has to be LGUs, and that the team be balanced between research and outreach. We want to make sure that what comes out of these working groups can be used either in an outreach perspective or extension perspective. So we are, again, looking for integrated projects. So we are happy the application for the proposal guidelines are, are on our website. And if you go to any of our themes, you'll see a working groups and then you'll see the outlines or what we're looking for for proposals. But we're really um, excited about the possibility of lifting up different work groups. So, so there, for example, there may be a working group that works on hunger or food, secure, food security or substance use disorder or climate change um, or a mixture of those three. Um, and my target households or my target businesses or communities or a mixture of any of those three. So um, we hope that you know, you'll, you'll think, oh, the sky's the limit. What could we possibly do? What do we wanna work on that we can work on and, and really try to have an impact on the North Central region? So we're excited about those working groups. The next is a small grant. So this is a new activity and not a new activity because the NCRCRD was already doing, had a small grants program. We're just trying to think of a different way of using the small grants 
uh, using them more for a targeted, targeted audiences or rapid response. Um, so for example, there might be a project that you wanted to do in your, your state and you think, well, this could be replicable, but I really wanna work and pilot it in my state, do the research and pilot in my state uh, focused on one theme or, or one, one target audience. And I know it can be replicable and that, that's what we wanna do. We know that $25,000 is not that much money. So spreading it across four states seems, <laughs> and maybe I'm thinking big dollars all the time, but we wanna make sure that we provide the funding to get as much impact as possible. Not a, you know, you've gotten funding, you've done the research and then nothing happens from it. We really wanna make sure that we're replicating, enhancing uh, the impacts that we're having from the small grants to the working groups. And so these would be for, again, those targeted purposes or for something that's rapid response. So let's say that there, again, is some so our flooding in, the, in Nebraska or North Dakota or South Dakota. So th that might be a rapid response grant that says, you know, I think I want to do some research around this issue or some other, I, I don't know why, maybe because I do disaster research that I'm always thinking of rapid response as a disaster, having an upper disaster, but those are the, the types of things that we're thinking about with these small grants. And, and this could lead to a working group, right? So a small grant could be targeted and then, so, you know, if we replicate this, we could do a great working group. So this could lead to a working group later on. And then uh, we're also uh, proposing some faculty sabbatical fellowships. So this would be a great way to, again, increase that collaboration and enhance the center's impact across uh, the land grant universities. We really, um, we want to encourage faculty to work with the center. So there could be a portion of the leave. It's roughly the, the money would be about one month of summer salary. Doesn't have to be in the summer. You could be taking a sabbatical in the fall or the spring. But um, a way to contribute, this person could contribute, or persons, could contribute to the NCR panel data set, if they're in survey topics, working on extension curricula, um, it, it, on any number of things that the center is doing that would enhance activities of the center. So getting a way for more faculty to, to work with the center in any range of, of areas, um, maybe even leading a new project. So we're really excited about that um, in terms of providing these sabbatical fellowships as well. Um, so uh, another new activity is there is a multi-state that is usually attached uh, to the NCR CRD. So the new, um, the new multi-state project is the NC1100 with the title of A Systems Perspective to Community Resilience, Rural Healthcare at the Intersection of Households and Businesses. And basically, um, it is a combination of, uh, I'll just put it bluntly, my interests and Michael's interests <laughs> in some ways. Um, but it's looking at, um, it's examining these innovative and evidence-based approaches to enhancing workforce development and organizational well-being and looking at healthcare and health and wellness as part of those. So looking at how small businesses have access, access to health care um, wellness programs for their workforce. We know that in rural, in rural areas, uh, there, there might be some substance use disorder pro, um, issues. No, there is, so how do we decrease stigma around some of those in terms of rural small businesses, but also as looking at them in terms of um, community-based efforts to substance use disorder. And I don't know if you wanna talk a little bit about that as well, Michael, on, on some of the, the things we've got going on around substance use disorder that are part of this project as well. Sure, thank you, uh, Maria. We have a grant from uh, the uh, North Central Cooperative Extension Association. So this is a $100,000 grant from the NCCEA. Uh, and we are working with um, University of Illinois and Ohio State University uh, to look at recovery oriented systems of care. We've developed a non-stakeholder facilitated uh, model or framework for this uh, recovery oriented system of, of care and it uh, employs a complex ad adaptive system concept. So it really promotes uh, sustainability in the way that we've got it structured. Uh, we're piloting this right now up in, uh, up in the Turtle Mountains in North Dakota, in Wayne County in Indiana and uh, Newton County in Indiana and soon we'll be selecting pilot sites in Ohio and um, Illinois. 
and uh, the curriculum is being written. So we're creating the plane while we fly it. Uh, we have a, a draft of the curriculum. It's to be finished uh, at the end of May. And um, we'll then continue to pilot, continue to refine the curriculum. But our plan is, is uh, once the curriculum is finalized and peer reviewed, um, we're going to host a train the trainer uh, for the North Central region and get that ready, get that program ready for deployment across the North Central region. So we're really, really excited about how far we've gotten so far, the successes that we've had thus far, and getting the program out throughout the North Central region over the next two years. Um, and so we just finished and we have to do a couple of revisions to our um, multi-state, uh, but it's been approved. So if something uh, in this sparks an interest in you and you are interested in joining the multi-state, it's like any multi-state, you can join the multi-state project. And so um, we want to put it out there. If you're interested in small business, health, wellness, substance use disorder, um, you might want to take a look at our um, at our multi-state project that is that is open for anyone to join. And Michael, again, you community development library. Sure. Um, so this was uh, an opportunity that we applied for prior to applying to host the center. And so we worked with uh, we being Ann Silvis and myself worked uh, with uh, Mark Skidmore on getting some resources so we could put together the dream that we had, which was creating a community development extension library. And um, we were working with Jackson Sky out of Indianapolis. They're the ones that created the Extension Disaster Education Network website. And they have a fantastic uh, library, resource library as well, focused on uh, disasters. And I saw that Carrie McKillop is on. Um, and so we wanted to do something that was focused on community development. Uh, we don't have a journal coming out of NACDEP. And so we thought that having a library where we could store or house a curricula from all over the United States. So new and even veteran community development extension professionals could have access to these curricula or find out what's being uh, taught or used in different states and connect with those uh, specialists and educators so they themselves can uh, deploy it in their own state. We thought this would be a great way to, uh, to do that. So this has been a collaboration between uh, NACDEP, uh, the University of Illinois, and Iowa State and Purdue and NCRCRD to put this together. We're going to be launching it, sort of the soft launch at, at NACDEP uh, on May, sometime between May 17th and 19th. We'll be putting the uh, URL in the chat so everyone can go and check it out. And then we're going to host a webinar in June for the hard launch. And we're going to be putting out a request uh, all over the United States for people to begin to uh, enter their, um, their work into the library. And so there are several of us that are going to serve as quote unquote librarians uh, for this resource. And we're hopeful that it will be something that the NCRCRD and NACDEP will be able to perpetuate for years to come. And it'll be a real uh, exciting resource for all of us that are involved in uh, community development extension. Great, thanks. Um, and so we're almost at the end and I hope that we'll have some great discussion um, here in a couple of minutes. But um, so our next webinar is how communities can utilize financial data in planning their future strategies and innovations from rural Iowa. And that'll be May 26th from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and they've got some really interesting things that they're doing in Iowa. And I think you'll, you'll find it really, um, really great and really interesting. And so we hope that you'll join us for our May webinar. And with that, I think I just want to, I want to open it up for um, discussion, uh, questions, you have about our new activities, um, anything related to that, and I'll stop sharing. Maria, we have a question in the chat. I'll go ahead and read it to you. Sure. Um, uh, it's would the sabbatical fellowships be possible as a virtual collaboration or will fellows need to be in residence? We know that everyone's banging down the door to come to West Lafayette, Indiana, but um, what are your thoughts on it potentially being a virtual collaboration rather than a residential one? Um, it could be a virtual collaboration. Um, we know that not everybody can can go somewhere even when they're on sabbatical. 
And so, um, you know, it could be a sabbatical and you might not have to be officially on sabbatical if you wanted to do something on, uh, during the summer. Um, I call it sabbatical fellowships, <laughs> but it could be you're taking a sabbatical and working with the center for the month in the summer and not be officially on sabbatical. Um, so this is just my, my turn of phrase, but it could be virtual. I think it, it has, would have to be some mutual understanding of what's going, what's going to happen. Um, but I, I would consider that we know now that we can all work virtually um, and be just fine. So, and we might not know where to put you if you can do us live yet. So, <laughs> people should feel free to put questions in the chat. Uh, another question Can you say something about the possibilities for research teams to collaborate with NCRCRD on grant proposals? Um, yes. Uh, yes and yes. Um, we are very open uh, to working with uh, other groups on grant proposals and, uh, and we, we sometimes serve as collaborators for, for grants, particularly to if you want to branch out on the national level or if you want connections to the sister centers as well. Um, and so that and as such, sometimes we served as advisory board members as part of the NCRCRD. So I've been asked to be uh, and an advisory board. So yes, um, just contact us and let us know how we can help and you know what, what can be mutually beneficial. So we are very open to that, um, if, particularly if we can help your grant be successful. So I would consider that part of the core of what we do at the NCRCRD. We may have some resources that we can, we can help you with. Um, we do not have this on lockdown, so uh, <laughs> we must have been very, we haven't been Zoom bombed yet. So if you um, want to unmute and ask a question the old fashioned Zoom way, you're more than welcome to do that as well, or you may put uh, your questions in the chat, but uh, feel free to unmute and ask your question. I'll ask a question. This is uh, Hannah McClure. I work at the University of Missouri. And can you share more about the advisory committee? Is that brand new? Are you looking for all of the members? Are there already um, some people who are part of it and you're just looking to fill two positions? Just a bit more of information about that. It is completely brand new. Um, and we don't have any members, so we're looking for all the members. Um, yeah, so we're looking for all the members. So if you're interested, yes, definitely contact us. Okay, great. Maria, I would add, I think I'm correct in saying this, that we envision to have representation from all four program areas on the extension side. And so we're actually going to make an ask to those program leader groups to please, you know, submit your victim to us that you'd like to have serve on the advisory board. But as Maria said, we've got these five outstanding um, advisory board members that we'd like to recruit and we want to make sure that we have a, a diverse mix of individuals uh, programmatically speaking from the LGU perspective um, as well and folks that are working with uh, the households and businesses and, and communities also so. Uh, okay so if I'm there's a, there's a question if I'm not part of a land grant institution, is this still something to learn and follow? And this is a fantastic, um, this is a fantastic question. Maria, if I may take a shot and then you can either uh, amend or add. Um, I think there's a wonderful opportunity for us to work with non-land grants as well. Um, we're working with APLU right now, as you know, APLU represents land grant universities, but also represents uh, public universities, and we are looking even beyond that. Um, if there's one thing I learned from Bo Ballou when he was the center director in the South was you always are looking out for the best people. And so as we put together these uh, grant proposals or as others reach out to us wanting to collaborate with us or reach into the North Central region and the talent that's there, um, we want to be working with folks that can move the research and extension agenda forward. So if that means uh, working through uh, engage your university engagements office, 
uh, as well as extension. We do that all the time in the Purdue Center for Regional Development. They're part of engagement here. Um, we want to be doing those things. And so we don't want to see your land grant status or your public versus private status uh, stand in the way of uh, collaborative opportunities. Uh, you know, we have this natural affinity to our sister land grants, obviously, and, and NIFA wants to continue to, to cultivate that. But on the same token, there's opportunities for, for collaboration. If we're going to try to solve these wicked problems, we need to do it in a holistic way and make sure that we've got the right people at the table. Yeah, and I would just say that, that uh, you can apply for a small grants program, uh, small grant that does not have to be a land grant university <laughs> that, that gives those small grants. And you could stand up a working group that included other land grants, but you might not, that could have members that are not part of land grant universities. Can I make a comment? Is that okay? Hi, Maria. Hi. Um, my name is Kimberly Zerikor from Iowa State. I'll be one of the people presenting at the webinar, so I won't say too much today, but I did want to share with everyone that NSF is very interested in rural research projects. One of the reasons I was asking, that was my question about working on grant proposals together. I'm curious if you guys are thinking maybe, for example, of a working group to try to figure out a collaboration in which you present yourselves to NSF as an organization that has access to all of these amazing researchers and resources to put you on the radar of, a, of an agency like NSF that's looking to be more deeply embedded in rural communities. And I guess I would, I would just kind of offer that, that we, my team has a big grant from NSF and I have been doing panels and stuff with them and the rural projects are really coming up and they're trying really hard to fund them. And so I guess I would just open that to everyone as an opportunity that we should all sort of grab um, that this is the rural moment um, and that they they want to fund us. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping NCRCRD can be a way to gather people interested in those kinds of grant projects and to sort of think through how as a region we might go after some multi-state projects. So thanks. Uh, thanks, Kimberly. That's that's wonderful because that's literally what we want to do, right, is get working groups that are going to have impact and then allow those working groups to go for bigger funding. And so that that would be fantastic. And definitely that's something that as we're thinking about working groups, that would be an outcome that we would be looking for is going for bigger funding and using maybe the working group funds as seed funding to either get together, work uh, collaboratively. And we know that that doesn't happen in one year. And so it might be a multiple year project that because you're not gonna get together and go be able to go for an NSF grant right away. Right, you'd have to think, talk, and we know that the projects that get slapped together don't have that success, but a, a group that's worked a year or two together will have success. One thing if I may add uh, is we're being introduced to different agencies and foundations and so on all the time. We, we are, if I may say so, I don't know if he's on, don't tell him I said this, but we're endowed with a rock star of a national program leader in Brent Elrod. And Brent is always actively trying to introduce the centers to different funding agencies. So in fact, yesterday we spent uh, quite a bit of time with some of the new program lead national program leaders that are part of NIFA. As you know, there's been a lot of turnover there and there's a lot of new faces. And so the, um, the RDC directors and associate directors were afforded the opportunity to sit down and talk about our research and extension agenda and the folks from NIFA were able to do the, the same thing. It's great to have those uh, informational exchanges. Um, and so if there's an opportunity to sit down with uh, NSF and there's a group of folks from the North Central region that wanna see that happen, um, we're more than happy to work with uh, Brent and our other contacts to, uh, to, to make that happen and invite you to uh, uh, join us as we have those discussions and talk about what's going on in rural development in the North Central region. Um, we want to be able to advocate um, on your behalf, if you will, uh, and talk about the great work that's going on in the North Central region so we can continue to bring resources here and do the important work that needs to be done. So Kimberly, if you have someone that um, that's your contact at NSF and you'd like for us to, to set something up, we'd be more than happy to put out a an invite to interested uh, research and extension uh, professionals uh, throughout the North Central region to, to join us in a, in a call with, uh, with NSF. I know that Eden does the same thing with, with FEMA and others, uh, CDC last year. And so this would be a cool opportunity for the North Central region to intentionally reach out and talk about our rural development portfolio. Great, I'll, I'll be in touch about that. 
Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Great. thanks. Are there other questions or comments? Let me check the chat. I didn't see anything, but no. Nope. Everybody wants their 10 minutes back <laughs> at, the <beginning. laughs> at the end of the hour. If you have um, working group ideas, you know, please let us know. Um, there'll be a process in place. Um, but we would certainly are more than happy to field, um, you know, wild harebrained ideas. We're coming up with them all the time. Uh, and, you know, as, as connectors, if you will, you may not even be aware of uh, another group in the North Central region that maybe is working on a similar thing and to be able to connect folks and uh, create those synergies is something that we'd like to see happen. And I have to say, there's something to be said by first mover advantage. It's really, we're relatively new and we're not flush with cash in some ways um, from the proposals. And so um, if you think about it, it's uh, now's a good time yeah. to, to put in a proposal. There was a question about the slides and I know that um, Saad is going to use his wizardry to uh, um, edit this down, add all the CGI that needs to be added and stuff. And then uh, we'll be posting the webinar and I would imagine we'd have no problem adding a link uh, alongside the webinar uh, recording with the slides in the PDF format. So you can go ahead and, and, and download those. All right, well, um, there's no other questions or discussion. Again, we want to thank you for uh, coming to the webinar. We hope we see you at our next webinars and the next one after that. Um, and of course, we what we want you to take advantage of the new opportunities we have now with the with the center. So thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.